Ah, uh, the survival horror genre. Um, I was not expecting to play this game. I was not expecting, you know, I mean, I, this was a surprise video. I wasn't going to say anything about it. I was, for those of you who are, you know, a couple of my friends I talk on Skype, you're probably surprised to see this. Because, oh my god, Swords Reviewing Game, that's not an IPG. Whoa, it's the end of the world. Um, before we get into the review, here's my little history with the Silent Hill games. Um, if you watched my video on how I got into RPGs, it's kind of slimmer to that. When I was eight, or however old, my dad used to play Silent Hill 2. Um, all the time, and I would watch, but I was scared as hell, and I, I lost sleep. Um, then we picked up Silent Hill 3, maybe a year or two afterwards. Still scary. Um, <laughs> it wasn't much scarier than the second one. It was just scarier, just as scary, if not scarier. Um, we, and then, oh god, I eventually, unfortunately, purchased Silent Hill 1 on the PSN. Uh, I'm gonna get a lot of hate for that, but, oh god. Um, we used to, I, I've owned this game for almost 10 years, wow, this game came back out in 2003, you know, purchased it that same year, picked it up, and you know what I mean, you know what, a couple, couple weeks ago, I was like, you know what, I, this game's just sitting on my shelf, I see it all the time, it's like, hey, play me, I was like, no, <laughs> you're just gonna scare the shit out of me, but you know what, I gave in, I, I picked it up, played it, and I'm not gonna lie, I was scared as fuck, but I did not regret it, I didn't realize how great of a game this was, I just... <laughs> Not, not only was it scary, there was just a bunch of extra pluses that I just didn't even know beforehand. Um, again, this was a game I wasn't expecting to review. This game, probably you weren't expecting me to review this. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoy. Uh, it's Silent Hill 3 for the PS2. Okay, the story in Silent Hill 3 revolves around our protagonist, Heather, um, doesn't have a last name. Actually, she might have a last name. There might be a plot twist at the end of the game that you might not know. Heather is the first and only female protagonist in this long-running series, and so even though if she was the only one, thankfully she's hot and she's very likable. She wears, you know, skimpy schoolgirl clothes. Um, at the beginning of the game, it's you start off as you know Heather in this glorified amusement park that's kind of fucked up. There's like rabbit costumes with blood on them, and you'll find all these weird monsters. Um, you start off with an arsenal of equipment in this during this sequence. You'll have a machine gun, a, a steel pipe, I believe a katana, pistol, all these kinds of weapons. You have a bunch of healing supplies. You'll fight a bunch of monsters without any explanation. Now this isn't a spoiler, but if if you happen to die against these monsters, or if you reach a certain part during this segment, um, you will find out that this is a dream. Heather will wake up in a diner by herself, you know, well, not by herself, meaning she has, you know, no friends with her or anything, she has a bunch of people there, she'll wake up, she'll be like, you know, what a terrible nightmare that was, um, so, anyway, as the story progresses, within the opening minutes of the game, um, Heather will be on the phone with her father, she'll meet a man named Douglas Cartland, who seems to know about her past, Heather, on the other hand, has sort of, um, I guess not really amnesia per se, but she kind of has little f weird memories of her past that she doesn't quite understand. Um, apparently, Douglas Cartland knows about her past and her birth, and you know he kind of convinces or tries to convince her, saying, I, "I know a person. You need you need to meet this person. You know, just give me an hour, half hour of your time, um, and you know then you could leave." But Heather, in all her infinite knowledge, decides, "No, you're weird and you're old, and I want to stay away from you." So she you know she runs to the fe girl's bathroom. She runs out. Um, you know, she tries to walk home, but there's a car blocking her path, so she goes through a uh, back entrance of the shopping mall, but turns out that there's these, uh, these weird monsters kind of roaming these halls. Heather has no idea what these monsters are. She has no idea where they come from. You know, it's just the whole mall of filled with monsters. Um, you'll eventually meet a character named Claudia, who, and again, it's no spoiler because you don't know who this woman is when you first meet her. Claudia is responsible for summoning these monsters. There is much more to this character. There's much more to Heather's character. There are only a handful of characters. I believe there's actually only four main characters. But at that, I actually like that because that actually makes it focus on those characters. They have a lot more screen time. All these characters are very distinct. I love these four characters. Um, they were they were just great. Heather's by far one of my favorite protagonists in a video game. She starts up as kind of a bitch, but she she does evolve as a person. She she becomes a somewhat decent human being as you know as the game progresses. She becomes a normal you know teenage girl that enjoys life at the end of the game. You know what I mean? She's she evolves so well. You know, like I said, you'll meet some cool characters. Douglas is a great character. Um, Claudia is insane, but she's interesting. You'll meet Vincent, who's kind of a psycho too. I love all these characters. I just think they were very well done. Um, you know, they all got screen time. They all no, not one character felt more important than the other. Well, Heather, because you're playing as her. But you know what? I, all in all, I think it's a great story. I'm not gonna lie. Um, this, 
I, I'd say the main draw of this game is its story. That it is definitely the strongest strongest aspect of this game. I loved every minute of it. Couldn't get enough of it. Always kept trying to go forward and see what was going to happen next. Um, if you're going to buy Silent Hill 3 for its story, um, go for it. There are many twists and turns that you won't expect. You know, you'll never see them coming. So, you know, like I said, if you're going to buy Silent Hill 3 just for its story, you wouldn't be wrong. Story, Silent Hill 3, enjoy. Graphically, the game looks phenomenal. The the character models are spot on. The enemies are freaky. Um, the atmosphere is just unsettling. Everything looks great. Just the lip sync, for the most part, is spot on. It just everything looks perfect. The all the environments are caked with blood. Like I said, all the enemy designs look exactly as they should be. They they kind of move in an unsettling and other unworldly way, otherworldly way, however you want to say it. The enemies, the way they twitch their heads, the way they walk, the noises they make, it's just crazy. The 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 graphics, I can't I can't stress this enough. They they look beautiful. You know, the cutscenes are perfect. Um, the art direction is nice. The menus look nice. Um, it's kind of like a you know black type menus has creepy cursor sound effects it's just great there's really not much to talk about i mean it's really it's only graphics i mean how much is there to talk about but a graphics two thumbs up konami however you say your name that is that you did an excellent job the graphics are awesome um the voice acting is mostly good um uh, there are a couple iffy spots here but for the most part like 95 percent of the time the voice acting is awesome um like when you're, you know, all the spooky noises you hear when you're rock, walking around the environment by yourself. Not even, even when there's no monsters, you'll hear some weird noises. You'll hear, you know, like the the foot, your footsteps. You'll hear uh, moans and groans. You'll hear um, uh, the radio emits static because whenever, whenever monsters get nearby, um, static emits. But I'll talk about that more during the gameplay. But anyway, um, sound awesome <laughs> um graphics awesome konami you nailed it this time awesome great job all right gameplay wise there's really not much to talk about this is a survival horror game there's really only a few elements when you're not really when you're not watching a cutscene, you are either a exploring b solving puzzles or three fighting monsters um there's really not much to it exploring probably takes top priority in terms of gameplay you're just you'll just find yourself wandering around trying to open doors and lock doors and you'll see what lock doors i mean in a second um puzzles um the puzzles can get tough um you'll do anything from finding special keys to finding tongs to get keys that are in out of reach stuff like that um you can change the difficulty of these puzzles on the title screen so say um you really suck at puzzles you can play on easy normal hard you could also set a totally different difficulty level for combat so say you want action um set the combat difficulty to hard and say you know you don't like puzzles put puzzle difficulty on easy um Exploring is one of the best parts of the game in terms of gameplay. Um, it's just really fun to walk around, find all these environments with blood, and you know, um, listen to all the monster groans and moans and stuff like that. It's really cool. Um, puzzle solving, like I said, it's just puzzle solving. And play any other game, it's puzzles. Uh, combat definitely does take a back seat between all these different sections. Um, the monster frequency isn't that high. I think I might be remembering wrong, but I'm pretty sure the number of monsters that appear on screen. Um, during certain dungeons will depend on the difficulty you select. 
Um, I personally, I'm not gonna lie, I personally play on easy monster difficulty because all I wanted to do is just experience the story. That's really all I wanted to. I didn't want a combat heavy experience, and even in the end, Silent Hill 3 is not very combat heavy. The combat is very basic. Heather has a weapon, you tar she targets an enemy, she attacks with said weapon until the enemy falls to the ground and squirms like a little fish. Then she kicks the enemy while it's down about 467 times, then it finally dies, rinse and repeat. There is no combat depth, there are no skill trees, there's none of that, and that is a good thing in this type of game. That is a good thing. You don't need combo trees in a survival horror game. It takes away from the experience. The game uses fixed camera angles, and while at, on the surface it can seem annoying, but it is done intentionally, you are supposed to get in the mood of a survi of like survival horror. Like You, you don't want to be able to rotate the camera fully because you, you always want to wonder what's around the next corner, and you'll never know because the game kind of teases you. Um, you usually walk around down a, ha uh, down a hall, you'll hear all, um, I've said it before, I'll say it again, moans and groans of monsters that may or may not be around the corner. Um, every time you open a door, you always dread hearing that radio sound. Um, how it works is every time a monster is nearby, you'll hear, um, you know, the grunts of the monsters themselves, and you'll hear slow static radio. That being said, there's always tension in the air. Every battle is always a thrill. Every battle is always tense, and it's not a thrill for the reasons you're thinking. It's not a thrill because Heather's doing all these cartwheels and jumping off walls and pointing dual guns at enemies. No, it's a thrill because you always want every battle to be over. Every time you're in a battle, you have that tight chest, tight pain in your chest. Your chest starts to hurt, and you just want it to be over so bad. And when all you see those monsters fall to the ground, you can do a sigh of relief. It just, it's, you know, you feel not satisfied, you just feel so relieved because it's over, the scariness, it's over, you can relax for, for a couple minutes, you know what I mean? It's just, it, the game is just scary, it definitely delivers in terms of horror. Like I said before, in a survival horror game like this, combat does not need to be, and cannot be, complex. There should be no health bars in the top of the screen, no green flashing health bars, and it blinks red or anything. No, it. and luckily Silent Hill 3 does not have that. The screen needs to be empty, all you need to see is the environment, your character, and the enemies. That's all you need to see, no health bars. When you go to the menu screen, you can at least see your health at the top left from a little blue square, and it you know, slow, slowly starts to turn different colors when you take damage, but no. You do not need on-screen indicators, you do not need a targeting cursor, you do not need little exclamation points over your head when you're exploring. You do not need that. Thankfully, this game does not have that, and it does not ruin the horror experience. And there's one more thing I want to mention before we wrap up the gameplay section. Broken locks. Good God, these things are everywhere. You will walk into a mall, you will walk into a construction building perfectly intact. Perfectly intact. With the exception of some bloodstains on the wall... You'll find everything is fine. Seriously, I know there's monsters walking around, but why is it just the locks that are broken? If there's monsters walking around, why don't they just like bust through the doors and the door? There's no more door. Like honestly, are the monsters seriously just thinking around and you know, just, you know, like looking at each other, like <laughs> doing that cartoon dog laugh? And they're like, all right, guys, all right, here we go, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> oh, that stupid bitch. We're just going to do this just to ruin her day. We're going to break every single lock, but everything's going to be everything else is going to be just fine. Just broken locks. What the hell is that? These things are everywhere. These these don't annoy me, but um in a way they I actually kind of find it kind of funny. I just I just laugh. I mean, there's like 4,000 fucking doors in this game. Um the dungeons do get quite complex. In fact, they start off complex. You know what I mean? It's just it's it's crazy, but I always I always just laughed at that. That's just that's just me. Okay, uh, length. The game can take anywhere from 8 to 10 hours, depending on what difficulty you're playing on. This isn't an RPG, so there are no side quests, there's none of that. Um, there are three different endings in the game, so that at least adds replayability. Um, but other than that, you're looking around 8 to 10 hours of gameplay, which is, I'm not, to be honest, I'm not quite sure what the standards are for the genre, but considering it's outside an RPG, um, I'm gonna say, you know, it's, it's a decent length for, um, this type of game. I was, I was happy with it. I didn't feel, I, I didn't feel ripped off or anything. Um, <clears throat> anyway, that's time to wrap it up. I mean, Silent Hill 3, I was, I'm really happy I picked it up out of nowhere. I mean, hey, randomness can go a long way, right? Happy accident, like, whatever, you know. I was really happy. Um, considering this was an RPG, I wasn't really expecting a great story, but I've, you know, I've been playing games for years, and uh, this was a damn good story. That's that's really what kept me hooked. Every time I saw a cutscene, I had my full attention. My eyes were wide open. I was so happy. I wanted to see what was going to happen next. Every cutscene was a joy for me to watch. I loved it. It was a great story. I loved the characters. The game was really scary. 
the you know the noises, the sound effects, the squeals and squirms of the monsters and everything. It was just a great game. Um, I am very very sorry that this turned out to be a long review. I was not expecting it to be this long. Um, but anyway, that's that's it for me. Um, I'm Swordfish. Take care. See you next time.